Welcome back uh, to the Restoration Christian Fellowship Network. We are so excited that you decided to join us online again today. Uh, we just want to welcome you this morning. There are many places that you could have gone this morning to watch a service uh, or to get your word, to get your worship in, but you chose to celebrate with us. And for that, we're eternally grateful. I uh, want to make you mindful of some things that are available to you online. Uh, we have a chat room uh, that, that you should see um, down at the bottom of your screen where you can chat and interact with us, ask questions about the word, uh, say hallelujah as it relates to what you're hearing worship-wise. Um, get online, get on Facebook, uh, get on Twitter, hashtag RCF worship, hashtag I'm watching it online but it feels like I'm in the building uh, uh, personally and individually. Um, and so based on that, I want to say welcome to you this morning. My name is Minister Rashid Russell. Uh, I am the young adult pastor here at Restoration Christian Fellowship and just want to give you a little information about how you can connect with the church um, and get even more involved with us. We know you're watching online right now, uh, but we have a Wednesday night service that you can come to. Prayer starts at 6 o'clock, uh, the worship starts at 6.30 and then promptly the word comes at 7 o'clock and we end at 8 o'clock sharp. Uh, we also have an opportunity for you to bring your kids into the church. We have a great youth and young adult ministry, children's ministry called Journey Ministries. It is a blessing, a true blessing to kids. We are trying to enrich their lives and give them the Jesus that they need uh, at a young age so that when they grow up, they will not depart from the faith as the word says. Uh, we have a young adult ministry called Regenerate. We meet the first Tuesday of every, uh, every month. Uh, we start at 630 and God is in the building every time that we do what we do. Um, but one thing I really want to show you is this poster, or this, this, this card here. This is the Eric Darius concert. We are hosting a concert because we are doing mission work. Yes, that's right, we're doing mission work. God doesn't want us just inside the four walls of the church. He wants us to get out and, and show our witness and show what we can do to grow the body of Christ in many a way. And so we're doing a missions trip to Malawi, Malawi, Africa. We're sending youth, we're sending people in the congregation and we want to support them, uh, not only missionally when they go out there, but we want to give them the opportunity to have the funds that it's gonna take so that they can have a great time and make impact in the church. And so this concert uh, is actually $35, as you can see. It's Friday, May 20th at 7 p.m. We want you to come out and enjoy some great jazz. Eric Darius is a bad boy. You heard me say it, he is a tremendous, tremendous artist. We're sponsoring the Malawi uh, effort and we wanna be able to do this. So it's, it's a general admission of $35, but it gives people an opportunity for us to support what we're doing in Malawi. Uh, other than that, we have a great word that's going on right now. Our pastor is preaching on a series of sermons uh, where he talks about a moment with Christ, a grace moment, um, and that we can move that into a movement and then ultimately be on mission with God. And, and I think that's one of the best things that we can do as it relates to a body of believers, to have a moment with Christ, a grace moment where God reveals something to you and shows you what your purpose and position is supposed to be as it relates to the earth. Then we move that into a movement where we get together and we partner with Christ and we move in the direction that Jesus wants us to go. Lastly, that becomes missional. We want to be involved in God's activity. Uh, and that's the main purpose of what we do as a body of believers. We want to be involved in what God has ordained us to do. So please come out and celebrate with us. Uh, we're so thankful that you joined us today. Um, Please chat with us. If you see something in a sermon that uh, is, 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 is connecting you and you want to shout about it, please feel free to do so, and we'll be back with you in just a few. God bless. Briefly, um, open your Bibles with me um, briefly. I am supposed to be done today with the series that we have been talking about um, with this mission, um, this movement, I mean, this moment, this movement, and this mission but the Lord won't release me from that yet. And, 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 and here, I just want to share one more thing with you. And um, I'm going to say one more thing as I stand in the moment um, in my studies this upcoming week. I'm not sure what God is going to do, but it's a word of caution that um, I want to share as we have wore um, this fig tree out to death. <laughs> um, I find it amazing that I think we spent three weeks uh, on Sundays and Wednesday looking at Luke chapter 13 verses 6 through 9. You ought to have that memorized by now. Um, if not, I'm going to invite you to go online and download the podcast from the series. Uh, it's going to make sense to you in uh, what I'm going to share today. But here's what we, we saw. Let me just review. Um, well, let me pray first, then I want to review, and then I want to share this thing that I'm going to share with you in a little while. Let us pray. God, open my heart to receive. Open our hearts to receive. 
our ears to hear, our understanding to perceive. We love you, God. We worship and we adore you. And we come to church Sunday after Sunday to just grow and to receive more from you. So I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Um, before I even speak, I just want to thank you for Sean and I want to thank you for Leroy. Uh, they blessed me with their testimony, God. Um, so my heart's been made glad and humbled by that. So as I share, may there be more Sean's and Leroy's, God, that's willing to go out into the world and do what you say do. So open our hearts. We give it all to you in your name. Amen. So here's what's been happening. We've been looking at Luke chapter 13, verses 6 to 9, about this fig tree that was planted in a garden. And um, the author says, for three years, the master came looking for fruit on the fig tree, and he found none. And then he said, cut it down because it's using up the soil. Why should it use up the soil? And then the um, vine dresser intervened on behalf of the tree and said, give it one more year. And he said, in that duration of the year, I'm going to dig around a thing. I'm going to fertilize it and then position it to produce fruit. And the things, there's several things that we said to you about that tree. Let me just say this briefly by way of uh, review. Number one, the fig tree was positioned for production in that it was in the best location possible and it had no excuse for not producing fruit. Very, very important. And the, the application I wanted you all to take away from that is that remember with me that the moment we give our heart to God, we are in God's vineyard. Come on, say amen. And, and I don't want you to walk away from here saying that uh, I'm a member of a church, I'm in Restoration Christian Fellowship, or whatever your church is, but I want you to know if you've given your heart to God, you are in God's vineyard. That's very, very important. So you're positioned for production, okay? And in all of that, God didn't save you just for the mere pleasure of saving you. He has work for us to do, um, which he created in advance for us to do. So for he, we're here with purpose, we're here to fulfill a destiny, and we're here to do what God called us to do. Secondly, not only was the tree positioned for production, but secondly, the tree was perpetuating its performance. Here's what was happening with the tree. For three years, it's been in this vineyard, and it remained lazy for three years and refused to, to, to show the owner um, gratitude by reproducing based on where the tree was planted. So to eliminate or to cut short the perpetuating of the behavior of this tree, um, the, the, the master came and say, cut it down. Now, not only was it perpetuating that performance, but it was sucking up neutrons from the soil and not giving anything back out in return. So the story was, get rid of it. It's using up the soil. Why should it stay there? Now, here's how the story switches. The vine dresser then which is symbolic of, of Christ who intervenes for us, intervened, and he said, give me one more year. I'm going to dig around it. I'm going to fertilize it, um, and then I'm going to position it for growth. Now, here's what I want you all to hear me say before I segue into what I'm going to talk about. The year that was allotted for the vine dresser to work on the tree was not for the tree to be productive it was for the tree to make the adjustments. I need a half an amen. amen. Yeah. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. I want you to hear me say this because we're going to go into the next thing. A lot of us are in a hurry to do for God before we become like God. God's not interested in your doing. Well, let me put me in the equation. In our doing if we don't look like him. So that one year that he said, let me dig around it, let me fertilize it, was so the tree could make the necessary adjustment such that when the timing of God was right based on the season, and I wish you all had heard the whole series, the tree is positioned to produce. If the tree hurried up and produced, without making the adjustments, things could look crazy, okay? My concern for the church is, is that we are in such a hurry to do for God that we don't take the time to become like God. And my prayer is that we all look like God. Does this make sense? So, so I want to switch gears, and I just want to touch this really quick. I want to look at another fig tree, and y'all grace me, grace me. We're not going to spend four weeks on this one. <laughs> I'm just going to hit this really quick because it'll make sense because we've, we've worn the other one out. So I need you to go over with me to Mark chapter 11, and I want to read something uh, real quick. 
as a word of caution to all of us um, so we can get to where God would have us to go. Mark chapter 11. I um, want to make sure I'm going to the right place. And jump down to verse uh, 14. Yeah. Yeah. Mark 11, 14. And then show you my one big thing real quick. Stay many of you there. Okay. Uh, verse 12. Back up to verse 12. Mark 11, 12. And I'm just going to read. It's a very, very short passage that many of you are very, very familiar with. It says here in the ESV, on the following day, when Jesus came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Come on, say nothing but leaves. Nothing but leaves. And here is the part that messes a lot of us up. For it was not the season of said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again, and his disciples heard it. Jump down to verse 20. You there? And as they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered, Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has what? Withered. Turn to your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, if you can't deliver... Don't advertise. Don't advertise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't need to preach nothing else. Y'all got it. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got it. You kind of get what I'm saying? Yes, that's, that's yeah, you, you, you got it. Yeah, if you, can't, if you can't deliver, don't advertise. The problem with Christianity, we're so busy advertising and we have no deliverables. <laughs> wow. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, if you can't deliver. Um, there was the, this famous um, Paul Mastone, I think it is a wine company that says, I will serve no wine before it's time. So you guys have all heard the slogan. Um, and then my, my doctoral coach um, says this to me all the time. He says, Felix, use what you've got rather than trying to be what you're not. Yeah, he, I mean, every time we meet for a mentoring session, he says that. He's even having me work it into my thesis. He says, if you're going to change your church, don't try to make the church be what it's not. Begin where it is. Very, very important. Does that make sense? So it begins where we are um, as opposed to trying to go somewhere and be something that we're not. And that's the danger with a lot of us as Christianity. So let me do this as succinctly and as tight as I can to try to get us out of here in a decent time. Go back to the text, and I'm just going to talk about it so you can kind of see what it is going. Look at verse 12, okay? You there? And hopefully for somebody who's been wrestling with this text for a little while, it might make sense to you. It says, On the following day when they came from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. Now, don't miss the phrase. Let me, let me walk you through this text real quick. Regardless of what your translations, it might say some of the same things. When he saw the tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. And then the author gives us this confusing statement, for it was not the season of figs. And he said, may no one ever eat fruit from you again, from it again. And his disciples heard it, and down to verse 20, it talked about when they came back the next day, the tree had withered from the root. Here's what you need to know is going on by way of literary context. Jesus now is on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem to live out his last days. And as he made his triumphal entry, which we saw when, if you were here for Easter Sunday, he's riding this mule, and he makes it into Jerusalem. And when he gets to Jerusalem, he goes into the temple at Jerusalem. And one author, in their rendition of this passage of Scripture, says he goes into the temple, and he sees them having church. Okay? I need to say it that way so you can identify with me. The choir was swaying. Ushers were serving. Our deacons were deaconing. Elders were eldering. I mean, folk were saying amen. Hankies flying. Wigs going all over the place. I mean, they were having church. They, they, they were just doing it. They were doing it. But in their days, it looked a little different. The money changes were there, and, and, and the doors were locked, and they wouldn't let you go unless they reach a certain amount in the offering. And, and they were offering sheeps and goats, and all kinds of stuff was going on. 
on in the temple. And you know the story. He, he went in there, took a whip, and started to overturn the tables of the money chambers and gave everybody a good butt whipping. And then he ends up saying, my father's house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of teeth. Y'all know the story. Come on. So Jesus leaves then, and on his way out, he is heading now to Bethany to get some rest. He's fatigued. And the author says that he looks out in the distance and he sees a fig tree. And what's striking about the fig tree is that this fig tree had leaf on it. And then the author gives us some pointed detail. He says, let me go inspect this thing because I'm hungry and I need something to eat. And so he goes over to the tree and he noticed as opposed to the tree having fruit on it, he noticed there was nothing but leaves on the tree. And then the author messes up us up even more by putting this statement in the text. It was not the season of figs. You know, I'm, I mean, y'all have read this passage before. And, and, and I want to, and y'all read? Just say amen if you read it, amen, yeah. And, and, and it seems on the surface, if you don't do your exegetical work on the passage, it seems as if this tree was treated unfairly because it looks as if Jesus goes to the fig tree out of season and say, produce. So if I'm you and I'm reading this text on the surface level, um, given everything that we've been studying for the past three weeks, I'm going to say to Jesus, Jesus, it's unfair. You shouldn't do that to the fig tree because the text says it wasn't the season of figs. So why are you looking for figs on a tree that's out of season? Come on, are you, are you, everybody here with me? So it looks now that the tree is at an unfair advantage. So why in the world did Jesus curse the tree if the author pointedly tells us it was not the season of figs? I need to give you some historical cultural information for us to understand what the passage is talking about. Here's what you need to know about a fig tree. Fig trees... Back in that culture and day and age, bore fruits two times a year. There was the old early fig, um, spring fig, and then there was the real harvest, which happened in the fall. Now, what would happen is that in the early spring, the way the budding process would happen on the fig tree is that this little nub, or what they would call in the Hebrew land, pagem on the tree, would start to form on the tip of the tree, and that thing that began to form over time would start growing a little bit, and then once the thing starts to grow, the tree then would eventually get leaf to serve as a covering or protection for the fruit that the tree started to give birth to. Now, what would happen is that in the early spring season, the, the fruit on the tree wasn't really um, palatable. It's not something you plucked and eat. You let it mature, you let it grow, and you wait until the fall season. But peasants and people that were hungry, they would from time to time in the spring season pluck that pageant and it would serve as food for them. Now the thing I want you to hear me say and not miss is that in order for a tree to have leaf, the fruit had to be there first. Are you guys tracking with me? So it started out with the fruit, and that as time progressed, the leaf would come, and the leaf would cover the fruit. I'm going to do this really, really quick. This is going to be the shortest message you ever heard me preach. Now, here's the text. It says here that it was not the season of figs. Now, let me give this to you, and we're going to talk about it. If it's not, if it's not the season of figs, why do you have leaf? <laughs> so I need you to work this with me grammatically as we kind of talk through this. It's, like, it's kind of like this. It's like, let me give you a couple of illustrations, then we're going to go to the text. Let's assume for a moment baseball season is over, but I am going to Green Valley Ranch, and I look over in the field, and I see children playing baseball. But the season is over. So because I see them playing baseball, when I go over to the field where they're playing, every expectation is that I'll see a game of what? 
Come on, y'all talk to me. I'll see a game of what? Are you with me? Okay, does this make sense? Okay, so by virtue of what they're doing out of season says that if I go there, I ought to expect to see baseball. Now, those of you from the islands can appreciate this. If I go over and I'm expecting to see baseball, but I see cricket. Y'all don't know what that is, huh? It's not the bug. It's a game. (laughs) And it's not baseball. I can't blame the kids, or I can't blame the baseball season, I blame what's happening there. So here's what's happening. This tree is flaunting leaves, and by virtue of the fact that it is flaunting leaves, it invited Jesus to come inspect it. Everything in nature says, before you have leaf tree, you better have fruit. Now, what I need you to understand is Jesus, the author, told us it was not the season of figs. Come on, the timing wasn't right, but this tree had nerve enough to advertise something it couldn't deliver. And so here it is, flaunting leaves. Hey, I'm a fig tree. So Jesus says, I know it's not season, but it looked like that tree might be ready to have some stuff on it. So let's go check it out. Notice what the text says. Notice what the text says. This will make sense now. Look with me, verse 13. And seeing in the distance a fig tree leaf, he went to see if he could find. It didn't say he went to see that he would find. He went to see if the possibility exists that this was the real thing because it had leaves. Ah. (sighs) Then when he showed up, he found, sadly enough, nothing but leaves. And so he curses the tree, and the tree dies. Let me say it this way, and I'm done. Be careful, people, of inviting Jesus to inspect you. And then when he comes, he sees nothing but leaves. Somebody said, preacher, where you going? I I don't get it. Well, let me not, I'm not picking on anybody. I just need to hit you with this caution because the year is for digging and fertilizing not premature production. Because <laughs> if you're showing off leaves and there is no fruit and Jesus shows up and conducts an inspection, don't holler it wasn't my season. You were the one that had the nerve enough to show the leave out of season before you made the adjustment. Are you with me? Is this making sense? Let me, let me, let me help you all because there's a whole... A lot of preacher, preachers, let me just start with the preachers, that are preaching, and all they're doing is a good flowery message, but it has no fruit. And if you've got nerve enough to stand and say, thus said the Lord, and there's no content in your message, you're inviting Jesus to inspect. Come on now. And my hope is when he shows up, he better find some fruit because the the possibility exists that he could sentence you. Come on, there's a whole lot of folk that's up on the worship team singing, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, waving leaves. I want y'all to hear me and and be careful with waving the leaves if you have not made the adjustment and your life isn't right yet because he's going to show up. And if all you've got is leaves, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. There's a whole lot of folk that's serving in the usher ministry and all they're doing is waving leaves. And whenever you wave the leaves and your life isn't right, you are inviting Jesus to inspect. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. Be careful before you sign up if you haven't finished the adjustment process yet. So if you can't deliver, baby, don't advertise because Jesus is going to show up. (sighs) Become before you do. Become before you do. Just a word of caution. I've got to check my own life. Remember when I started the series, I said it starts here, right? 
I've got to look at me. Felix, how are you living? How are you? Are you being holy? Are you being a person of good character, good integrity? Are you living up to your word? Are you doing what the word of God says? Because the moment I hang my leaf, I wish I had somebody in here. The moment I hang my leaf, and don't, don't holler, well, I've got the leaf. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The fruit is coming. No, no. Something is out of order. You cannot have leaf if you don't have, oh, I wish I had somebody here. Fruit first. Leave second. So I think, I, think, I think this season that we're in as a church, it's a major adjustment in all of our lives. It's a major adjustment because the world is watching. Here's how Katrina said it. She goes over to the Gambia, and all the Muslims assume that everybody in America, I'm going to paraphrase, loves God the way they do. Here's how she said it. They assume everybody in America are Christians. Why do they make that assumption? Because there's a whole lot of leaves. <laughs> and so in Africa, they turn the TV on and they see leaves all over the place. And so here's what they do. They want to leave their homeland and come to the U.S. hoping they're going to have some fruit, and they bump into leaves. Church, church, church. Well, Felix, be careful not to wave your leaf if you haven't made the adjustment. Are you guys hearing me? Give you a year to dig around it and fertilize it. Let me make the adjustment. Then if a fruit come, at least the leaf is going to still be hidden. So I'm not inviting inspection until I'm ready. I wish I had somebody in here. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry to do if your life is jacked up. Don't be in a hurry to, to wave something if you're not right yet. Take the time. Take the time to allow the digging and the fertilizing and all that stuff to take place. Are you hearing me, guys? Come on, I want you all to hear the heart in what I'm saying. Because the moment you do this, heaven might say, well, the season ain't right yet. But it looked like that tree is have some leaves. So, wow, something must have happened. Happened. And he's going to show up to inspect. And the question is going to be, what are you going to give him? Because he is not interested in leaves. Good vocal tactics, nothing but leaf. Good speaking, nothing but leaf. Good skill, nothing but leaf. He's not interested in leaf. He is interested in fruit. If you can't deliver, don't. <laughs> That's why I so appreciate I'm done. The hymn, the, the songwriter that says back in the day, please be patient with me. He said, God is not through with me yet. Y'all know it yet. And he said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Then the refrain would say, when God gets through with me, I shall come forth. Are you hearing me? Here's how David puts it in Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor see it in the seat of the scorn for all scoffers. But his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. He is making the adjustment. He's digging and fertilizing. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And all he does is he digs and he fertilizes. And he digs and he says, this is it. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. His leaf, therefore, shall not what? With, yeah, y'all get it, but the leaf is not talked about until he spends time in the Word digging and fertilizing, making the necessary adjustment. The moment you wave leaf, you're inviting an inspection, and you risk moving out of season or time 
and saying to God, come, inspect me. I'm done. That word just jacked me up. It did. It did. It did. So I've been in review mode for the past week or past few days, just like, all right, looking at all what I would call leaf. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure there's a pageant on the other side of it. <laughs> and the leaf is covering the gift, not exposing what's not there. Very, very important. So here's what I want to do. I want you to bow your heads with me. And I want you to search your heart as the worship team come. That song we were singing meant so much to me in light of what we've been talking about, getting seed in the ground, and I give myself away. My prayer today is that we would all go in adjustment mode. God, what are you saying? God, what are you doing? What do you want to happen in me so I can be like you? Mold me, shape me, change me, make me. Turn me into what you would have me to be. So wherever you are, just go to God for yourself, just in your own way, just in your own way. Grace and peace to you, church. What a wonderful word we had on today. Um, a word to ponder, a word to allow to kind of sink into your spirit and understand that, Father, um, what you've given me, allow it to be evident, God. Allow me to show something, God, that came from you. Don't allow me to false advertise, Father. Let there be no hypocrisy on the inside of me. But God, if you see a leaf, God, allow there to be some fruit, God. And that fruit came from you. So uh, maybe somebody's out there right now and you need prayer. Uh, you've seen the altar call. Um, you've seen the call to action. You've seen the application that's called for in this worship and in this word. And at this point in time in your life, you may be feeling like there have been times where, yes, God, I've, I've shown up and I was nothing but leaves. God, I've shown up um, and, and there were things that I was portraying, but that really wasn't me. And if you're like me, you're asking God, God, correct that in me. God, create in me a clean heart. Renew me. Um, allow me to be the person that you called me to be. God, restore those things that are not apparent. Take the hypocrisy away, God, and allow me to work in coordinates with you, God. Allow my fruit to come from on high. So let's pray um, and ask God to restore us and redeem us in this moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come under the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. God, asking God that you would just restore us on today, God. God, that we would bear fruit, God, and that we would bear much good fruit. God, let nothing that is in us, God, that doesn't look like you, God, let those things, God, that we put in front of people, God, those heirs, God, all those things that have nothing to do with the Spirit, God, take that out of us in the name of Jesus. But God, give us the opportunity, God, to come back unto you, God, and say, restore me, refresh me, God, bring me the fruit that I need, God, so that I might go out and cause impact in the world. Now, God, we repent of all things that we have done that are not pleasing in your sight but we accept your grace, we accept your mercy, and we accept the fact that you are digging and fertilizing us, God, that we might become the believers that you have always said that we could become. So, Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It is in Jesus' name we pray, and we say amen. Now it's time for our offering. Uh, if you click below me, you should see a donation button on the site. Um, and let's just remember that God loves a cheerful giver. It doesn't matter if you're here in the sanctuary or if you're at your house, but God tells us that we are to be givers, that we are to be cheerful givers, that we can show our thanks for what God has done in our lives uh, by being a provider for somebody else, for being a witness for somebody else, for helping to uplift and upbuild the kingdom of God. So. Now it's time for our offering. Go ahead and click the donation button. You can pay your tithes. You can give an offering. Uh, feel free to go ahead and be a supporter uh, of the Malawi trip, of what we're doing as it relates to Africa. Do what you can to help the body of Christ grow and build, and let's see that fruit come from your lives. So we thank you for your offering. We thank you for coming to visit with us. We thank you for the fact that you're so committed in joining us week after week, being committed as an online audience. We hope that we can get you in the sanctuary soon, be it a Wednesday, be it a Sunday, be it for youth, be it for Regenerate, whatever it may be, we're looking to see you at RCF. We love you, we thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again. God bless.